So today, in the SN1 portion of the experiment, we are going to be performing the SN1 synthesis of tert butyl chloride. And so firstly, you're going to have tert butanol, uh, a tertiary alcohol that is going to undergo protonation by concentrated hydrochloric acid. And then secondly, the rate determining step that occurs is the dehydration of water from the butanol. And so you create a stable tertiary carbocation and then by that, you can then go forward and attack with the chloride. So it starts firstly with the protonation, followed by the loss of water, which is the rate determining step in the substitution reaction. And it should be known that it is a substitution nucleophilic unimolecular because the rate determining step is the dehydration step. Then the nucleophilic attack occurs by the chloride ion. And additionally, it should be noted that SM1 is favored by tertiary alcohols, and that is the reason that we are doing this on the side uh, next to the SN2 reaction. So the scheme of the reaction is to firstly take 15 milliliters of concentrated hydrochloric acid, place it into an Erlenmeyer, and then cool it on an ice bath. Then secondly, take four grams of tert butanol, then place it into an Erlenmeyer with a stir bar, and then you will slowly add cooled HCl into the reaction flask. And then at, after about 15 minutes at room temperature and stirring on the stir plate, the reaction should be done. So you will take your product and pour it into your separatory funnel. And then you will go forward to perform a wash. And this will be firstly with draining the aqueous layer here. And then secondly, you will have to perform your washes. So you will use 30 milliliters of saturated sodium bicarbonate. And then secondly, you will use 30 milliliters of saturated sodium chloride or brine solution. And then it can be dried over anhydrous calcium chloride or sodium sulfate. And then finally, once we have collected our product from our separatory funnel, then we can perform our analysis of our product, which is terbutyl chloride. So firstly, you will want to weigh the mass of your product. Secondly, you will do gas chromatography. And then thirdly, you will perform the silver nitrate test. And as a reminder, it will be that you will use one milliliter of ethanolic silver nitrate into a test tube. Then you will take 10 drops of your product and add them into the test tube. And then a precipitate will form and you will record your observations from this experiment. So in the bin for this experiment, you will have a 10 milliliter graduated cylinder and a 125 milliliter early myeler flask, a 125 milliliter separatory funnel, as well as the stopper. Um, you will have a 250 milliliter beaker and two uh, 50 milliliter early myeler flasks, a 50 milliliter graduated cylinder, a um, amber bulb and a micro spatula. You will also have the magnetic stir bar and its retriever. And then you will have um, a test tube and the test tube rack. Um, okay. Well, apparently you actually have what, six test tubes. Yeah. And then three of these little vials um, with caps for the GC. Yeah, so almost uh, 23 glass wares. So let's start now. So for SN1, SN2 reaction, uh, here you can see these are all chemicals which are you will find in the fume hood. Uh, be careful once you work here. Uh, this is the hydrochloric acid concentrated and this is sulfuric acid so work very careful do not uh, spill anything or do not spill on your um, cloth so always use uh, gloves goggles and lab coats and um, toe cover shoes so that you will be protected and the starchy butanol usually remain at um, solid at room temperature that is why we kept it in the 40 50 degrees celsius so that we can weigh easily. So, okay, let's just start the reaction now. Okay, so now starting for the SN1 reaction, you're gonna take the hydrochloric acid and you'll wanna use your pipette here 
and then take it into a large graduated cylinder and then make sure to let it drop down the side so that way that it doesn't splash out anywhere. And then once you are at 15 milliliters, then you'll place this back over and you can carefully pour it from the graduated cylinder into your Erlenmeyer. Okay, so we have a seal here. Now we need to cool it. Take it over. And then take it up the spot. Cool it down in the ice bath. Great. Okay, so we're gonna have our T butyl alcohol over here and it's heated on the hot plate so that way that it's liquid. And since it is a liquid, we're gonna have to weigh it. Okay, so this is a bigger bottle and they have already transferred into a small bottle. Mm -hmm. We are going to use this to weigh. And so to weigh it out, you'll want to firstly take another container like this Erlenmeyer and you place it on the scale. And tear it. So now you're at zero and then you'll want to have to go forward and add it into the air of the Meyer. So you just want to carefully have your pipette go in. And now that it's filled, you can take it over and then place it into here. And then add it into your Erlenmeyer and just watch the weight. How much we need? We need four grams. Four so gram. it okay. would seem that every pipette full is about a gram. Okay, so we need almost four. So about four pipette fulls. Mm -hmm. And just be careful to not spill any and to make sure to... Yeah, don't spill anywhere when you are weighing liquid on the wing. Okay. So now we have our four grams of terbutanol here. And then we have our chilled 15 milliliters of hydrochloric acid. So then we are going to slowly take it over from here. And then take it close to here and then add it into here dropwise. This is for a one reaction. And there you go. Yeah, and maybe you can mix it. Keep mixing. Keep going. Mix and then add, mix and add. Okay, so now after you've added all of the hydrochloric acid, you can see it's starting to get cloudy. Mm -hmm. And we just continue to stir it and wait for 15 minutes. So you just keep mixing at room temperature. So this is the sun on the action. And we added all the SCL. Okay, so now 15 minutes is up, and so we're going to retrieve the stir bar firstly. Place it to the side, and then we're going to take our solution, we're going to add it into the separatory funnel. You're going to want to wait. And just then a we bit. have to wait. For the two phases yeah, you can place. see two phase from here. So wait till two layer separate and drain out the aqueous layer from the bottom keep the top layer okay so now the two layers have separated it's a very small upper layer but we're going to go forward we're going to drain off the water you just want to make sure that whenever you're draining it off that you watch to not lose your product from the top so once we get closer, slow down. And you can stop. And then we can now add in our saturated sodium bicarbonate solution. You'll notice some light bubbling. Then 
stopper on there. Make sure to hold it from the top and hold the bottom part as well. You're going to shake and then remember to release the pressure upwards. Give it a second. And then you need to turn it and shake again. Make sure to have it up. And then you will see again the organic layer on the top and then the sodium bicarbonate at the bottom. And you can let it sit for a minute to let it separate a little more. And after that, we have to remove the bottom layer and give brine washing, saturated sodium chloride solution. Okay, so now that you have let the saturated sodium bicarbonate settle and it's separated from the organic layer, you're just going to go forward to remove it as well. And it should be fine at the start, but you just wanna make sure near the end that none of your product goes out. slowly here at the end, get as close as you can, and then you want to add in your 30 milliliters of saturated sodium chloride or brine, and this will dry your organic layer. And so in the same way you place the stopper, take this up, hold it from both ways, side to side, go up, and then release the pressure, okay, and then do two more times, and sit here, open the stopper. So after that, once the uh, aqueous layer will be gone, we will collect the top layer and place sodium anhydrous sodium um, sulfate or calcium chloride to dry it and then we will weigh how much we got it. Okay, so now that the two phases have separated, you're going to go ahead and pour out the aqueous phase or the brine. You're going to want to remove as much of it as you can. Of course, you can go fast at the start, and you have to slow down as you approach it. So start slowing down. Huh? More. You can go fast. And you'll just want to get really close and get as much of that out without losing your product. And then, in a separate flask, You'll want the calcium chloride. So you can see it's here in this dry flask. You want to make sure it's very dry. So that way any residual water that could be in here still will get captured by it. So then now we're going to take your product over. Make sure you get every drop. And let it sit and then after five minutes we will remove it to be mm -hmm. right yes so just want to let it dry out okay so now that your product has dried over the calcium chloride you're going to take an empty flask and then you're going to place it on the scale and then you're going to go ahead and tear it then take it out and then you're going to want to pour it over Pour it directly over into your flask. You know, try and get as much as you can out of there. Some of it may still be in here, but that's okay. Yeah, slowly decaying. And looks like we have a final yield of 2.325 grams. From here, we can calculate how much percentage we got it. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so now we're going to be performing the silver nitrate tests. So you'll take your 1% silver nitrate and ethanol, and you're going to take about a milliliter of it. So you can take the dropper and take about a milliliter over. And then close it. And then take your product here, the T butyl chloride, and you're going to want to add about 10 drops. One. Pour it from the other side so that we can see. So you can yes. see it there. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's nine, getting white. Ten. Yep. And immediately, you can see the precipitate form. And Where it shows. It is. So this is a successful reaction. Mm -hmm. So we got tertiary butyl chloride and white precipitate. Yes. So now Great. we have our silver chloride here.